Good morning, good morning. This is Miss JJ, Jacqueline Richardson, Deja, Jackie, whatever y'all call me. Good morning. Uh, it's Tuesday morning, and I'm going through life situations. Uh, my car broke down again. This is the second time in one month. Uh, and I came out of pocket to fix it the last time, and it's acting up all over again. So, with that being said, um, I won't be able to be on this podcast too long because my my mechanic is going to be looking at my car within another half an hour. So, I have to um, be considerate <laughs> what I talked about yesterday and be ready when he's, he's ready. Um, but today, it's Tuesday. Beautiful outside. It's not too hot. I'm thankful for being awoke. And all of y'all should be thankful as well. Um, today I want to talk about death and when we lose loved ones. And what we should do when a person loses a loved one. You know, I experienced something a long time ago when um, my aunt had passed away. And it was like unreal, you know, um, I just couldn't believe it. Something out of a movie. Um, one of my friends, her mother had passed away and her mother passed away, I believe two days after my aunt passed away. So we was both going through death at the same time. And... Someone kept picking with her and picking with her. A girl kept picking with her, you know, saying nasty things to her. And she told her, look, you know, I don't feel like dealing with this because my mother just passed away. The girl got crazy with it, you know, um, talking real reckless, you know. um, So, you know, it went after that, you know, being especially being that we were the type of people that, um, didn't take ignorance well, you know, um, so it led to a fight, and here we are, both out, um, I don't believe I had to fight that day, um, because I think it was a one-on-one, nobody jumped in, but we all always stuck together in the hood, you know what I mean, and if there was more than one person, we never went out to fight without our friends being around, just in case, you know, someone tried to jump us, so, um, we went out, you know, in the midst of us mourning and grieving um, to protect her, make sure nobody hurt her um, during this particular fight. Now, it, it, it ceases to amaze me because people, you know, need to learn how to respect others. Even if you hate a person, you know, uh, when a person is going through death, you fall back, you know. You you just have to fall back because their minds are not right mentally and physically. They're weak um, due to grieving. You know, they just lost one, especially when you lose your mother. You know what I mean? And like with her, that was her birth mother. So, you know, she felt a lot more pain. Um, Well, I can't say she felt more pain than I did because... Luana's the one who raised me, and she had passed away. So, um, she was like a mother to me, so I was dealing with it. I was going through it, you know, and I had just left my my aunt when um, me and my friends had just went to, to see her, and we was watching um, BET Awards, and Maxwell was singing, and she was talking about Maxwell, and then we... Decided to go after that, and I kissed her and told her, I'm leaving. I'll see her tomorrow. And before I can get home on the FDR, uh, they called me and told me that she passed away. So, you know, I was dealing with a lot because I was just, there, you know, just with her, you know. Um, but th- the thing is, you know, we have to learn how to respect people. You know, whether, like I said, whether you hate them whether you know you, you you don't care if you don't if you don't care just don't say anything at all sometimes that's just the best way to deal with things you know but the way we normally greet people is you know 
you have our condolences or my deepest sympathy, you know, um, can I help you with anything? You know, if you if you have the, the means to help them, you know, this is what we do when we um, we um, deal with death. You know, um, you try to console the person as much as possible, you know, because grieving is not easy. You know, for those that do know, I've lost so many family members. Uh, I mean, let me run them down to you real quick because the number, the counts is, is going crazy. You know, um, let me see. My Uncle Luther, my Aunt Alice, my Wani, my Grandma Tina, my mom, my little brother, um, my dog, my cat. Um... Recently, we just lost um, my stepmother um, from the COVID. Um, we, I lost my, my daughter's father. Uh, that was a, two weeks ago. Um, you know, so, and we didn't announce it um, because, you know, um, his family is private, so we didn't really announce it. Um, however... When people are going through things, you you have to respect it, you know. It's a life situation, you know. Um, When you're losing, when you lost someone, you know. Because you're losing a part of them, you know. And you, you have to deal with that. And dealing with it is really, really, really hard. You know, um, when you've been attached to a person, you know, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, you know, your mind is, is, is moving slower. Some people mind move faster, you know, you're thinking about all the times that y'all was together, you know, the things that you've done, you know, it's, it's a lot your mind be going through. So people don't really need that extra, you know what I mean? They, they, they just can't deal with that extra. You know, um, it's not as easy as people think it is, you know, and, and this is more for my youth, you know, um, because a lot of you may not have experienced, um, death and there's a lot of you that have, you know, there's some that might've lost a parent or two parents. So they know what it's like to grieve. And, you know, we try to support people as much as possible. And then nowadays, kids are losing their friends, you know, that they're going to school with, that they're growing up with, you know. So it's really difficult um, to deal with that pain, you know. Sometimes we go through a lot of mental, you know, um, bad mental issues, you know, behind it. Like, a couple of years ago, we lost one of the, the girls in the community, you know, um, and it took me, I was grieving longer with her than I grieved with, well, my mom is still has a, has a toll on me, um, and my um, daughter's father has a little toll on me, um, but she had a toll on me as well for a long period of time, because how it happened... Um, I had just seen her. She was just in my house, you know, um, so I was like, kind of, my mind was just, my mind wasn't right, you know, because I just couldn't understand. She was so young, you know, young girl, you know, and she was with the kids, you know, and and then on top of that, I had to watch the kids grieve as well, you know, because they... You know, I had accompanied accompany them to the funeral. I had took about uh, five of them to the funeral, and I had to deal with each and one, each and every one of those, them grieving as well. You know, um, been pacing the floor at night because they couldn't sleep. You know, um, I would let them, you know, um, spend the night. You know, the the, the, the kids and. Um, they would pace the floor at night, like, because they couldn't sleep, you know, thinking about it, you know, and, and I, I, I felt for them, you know, um, so it was, it, it was difficult for me, you know, being an adult in a situation, trying to help, uh, the kids grieve, you know, because they were so young, um, getting this situation, you know, um, being in this situation, 
So it, it's really hard on people, you know. So when you have um, a friend that has lost someone, you know, whether it be their friends or it be their family members, try to console them the best way you can, you know, and, and, and replace that void. You know, allow them to talk about it, you know. Um, just try to be there for them as much as possible, you know, um, because... Their mental is at stake, you know. So th- these are the things that, you know, we have to focus on helping each other. We are one, you know, when it comes to, um, they say America is one, you know. we supposed to unite as one. And when people are going through things, we supposed to try to help them um, as much as possible. Now, I can understand if, you know, somebody did something really bad to you and you like, ugh. I'm not trying to help this person. Then don't just don't say nothing at all. Just you know, don't involve yourself. You know, um, but you don't have to say anything nasty either. You know, um, just stay away. You know, um, but if a person has, you have been friends with a person, or you know a person that's going through something, try as much as possible to console them and and deal with their pain, you know, um, we all go through pain in a different way, you know, um, we have to deal with death in a different way, depending on how the person died, depending on how the, if the person was sick, um, if the person was going through things, you know, we, we all deal with it differently, you know, um, as we get older, it's a little bit easier, you know, because you haven't been through it so much, but, it's something that we have to face in life because this is what happens in life, you know. Um, just try and, you know, just console people, you know, the best way you can so God can see you doing his work because he's not able to physically come down and, and, and give us that extra support. So he uses us as humans to to do the work that he wants to do for us, you know, um, and just follow, you know, um, be there, you know, for the people that's, that's in need, you know, um, because God will reward you. He will put somebody else in a, in a spot to reward you. And, you know, that's the way it works, you know, um, I'm not going to keep this podcast going too long because I told y'all that um, my car is broken and I got to go try to look at it, get it looked at, you know. Um, I'm trying not to be stressed out about it because, you know, stress will hurt you and, and make you sick and kill you. And I've been through a, a lot, lot, lot within the last, I would say, 45 days. I've been through so much, you know, like I told you, we lost two people. Um one that was really, really close to me and one that wasn't close, was close to me, but not as much, you know. So the second passing really, you know, um, really um, hit me mentally, you know, I'm going to say that. It hit me mentally and emotionally. Um, and I had to deal with helping my my daughter get through, you know, and she's still, you know, going through her, her issues, you know, so I had to help her, you know, as well, so I was dealing with my own grievement, plus helping her with grievement, same pattern from when the kids lost their friend, you know, so, yeah, um, this, this is, this is, this is everyday life situation, and we just have to be, like I said, um, understanding, because it's going to happen to you one day, you know, it just ain't happened yet, but it will happen, and when it happens, you're going to want people to be there for you as well, you know, you're going to say to yourself, you just wish somebody was there to just talk to, you know, or for you to just cry on their shoulder one time, you know, um, just to get the pain out, you know, like when my mother passed away, I didn't cry the whole time. You know, the whole time because I had to stay um, strong for my family and to get the funeral arrangements done. 
to make the right decisions, you know. So I had to ask God to, like, halt my pain for a little while, you know. Um, so I can at least get that done, you know. And once I got that done, um, and I had to do it all by myself, I mind you, you know. Um, I didn't have no family members there with me um, setting her funeral arrangements. Even the, the funeral directors, um, shout out to them, the McCall Funeral Home up in um, the Bronx, upper Bronx. You know, they said, you sure you're going to be okay? You're here by yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I got to do this. I have no other choice. You know, I don't have no family, you know, to, to help me with this. So I got to do this. You know, <coughs> excuse me. So I asked God to, to you know, just cover me, you know, cover me from all that pain so I can get through it. And he did. And I and I got through it. You know, I'm, I, I was stronger than I thought I was because... I ain't think I was going to make it through it, but <laughs> I did, and I thank God for it, you know, but here we go, a year down the line, it wasn't even a year, maybe about six months down the line, and I'm breaking down, you know, as soon as I see somebody sick uh, with the same illness my mother had, I just broke down, it just like drove me mad, you know, um, and my heart was hurting so bad, I, I could feel the pain through my chest, you know. When I broke down, um, that was all that built up for, from, you know, me not being able to cry or, you know, grieve the way I wanted to grieve, you know. Um, and then every now and again, you know, especially around Mother's Day and her birthday, I get, you know, I go through my mental issues, you know, and break down again, you know. And uh, one day I was talking about on Facebook and broke down, you know, um, but, you know, it's okay to cry, people. You know, don't allow no one to tell you that you're weak because you cry, you know. Crying is getting your emotions out, and you have to get your emotions out because if you keep your emotions in, you're going to explode. You know, that's like filling up a balloon with water, okay? And the more water you put in it, the bigger it gets. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes, that's what happens to your body when you hold those negative emotions in, okay? The feeling gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it explodes. So, we have to learn to get it out little by little. Whatever we're going through, get it out. Sometimes you got to cry. Sometimes you just got to think. Sometimes you just got to look at the water. Whatever helps you get your emotions out, do it. Sometimes we got to meditate. You know, um, we do a lot to try to keep our emotions under wrap. However, you can continue to keep your emotions under wrap, but it's better to just let them out and, and start all over again. You know, um, holding that stuff in is not good. Like, I was looking at a TikTok, uh, TikTok yesterday. And it said, if you don't, if you in front of people and you don't want to cry, hold your nose and put your head up. And if I want to cry, I'm going to cry. I'm not holding my nose, putting my head up and doing all of these things to hold my emotions in. If I need to shed a tear, a tear too, I'm going to shed a tear too um, to get my emotions out, shake it off and, and get back to who I am. You know, um, so TikTok, whoever did that. That particular post um, is bad. Allow people. What is the problem? Which one is science? Um, you got a couple that says science. You got moon science. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know Egypt is in school, and um, she's she's always messing with me. Like, um, what is it called? Soul system um, science. It might be here in physics. You got chemistry and you got biology. You got three of them. So, I don't see no more. <clears throat> Everything else is you got engineering, world language, Spanish, French, art. You ain't ready for no SAT. Why they got SAT up there? Well, this isn't my school app. So, what is this? Brainly. It helps you get answers. <laughs> this is the other thing we're going to talk about this tomorrow about children 
cheating their way through school. It's not cheating. Yes, it is. It's looking for information. It helps you look for information. You ask questions and it helps you get, it brings information for you to read and then you can figure out the answer. It's like a book that basically brings up what you need. Oh. I thought she was cheating, y'all. I was about to get on her. But I still need one. I, check this one here. Okay. Check physics. Okay, now I'm on my live. You've been live. Run your lips. Hi. <clears throat> but anyway, you know, she's in homeschool. Um, she's been in homeschool for over three years now. And um, it seems to be working for her, you know. Um, I just got to watch her really well and make sure she ain't cheating, y'all. And she ain't Googling the answers, you oh. know. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing. Um, other than that, you know, she's been doing pretty well. But getting back to this podcast about uh, giving respect to those that lost loved ones, you know. Um, we must do this, people, you know, uh, because God is watching. You know, and our time is getting shorter and shorter. You know, um, you see the things that's going on in today's world. You know, things that I thought I would never see. But we see it. So we got to learn to be a little bit more thoughtful, kindful to each other and help one another. Because there's going to be a day where we're all going to have to try to help each other as much as possible. The way the world is going today right now, you know. And, like, right now, what we're going through with this, with this, this COVID, you know, everybody's going through something, and we got to support <laughs> each other, you know, just like with the, the riots and stuff, you know. I saw a post on Facebook, one of my, my um, I call them my nieces or my, my nieces and nephews, um, one of my nieces put up, you know, I, I'm getting so confused here. What do I need? Do I need a mask, a Glock, or a generator? You know, you got the hurricanes coming. You got the riots going. So you need, well, with the hurricanes, you need the generator. With the 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 riots, you need a gun. With the, the uh, COVID, you need a mask. You know, it's really getting to people's mental. Like, yo, what's going on here? Is this too much? You know, um... And then we're also dealing with death with the COVID. And then all of this stuff consists of death. You know what I mean? What can possibly happen during uh, these times? You know, so we have to prepare, you know, and, and be ready, you know. And we're going to talk about that, you know, um, in another podcast about being ready. You know, people don't realize mm-hmm. that, <laughs> you know, it's a saying. You don't have to get ready if you're already ready, you know. And like um, I tell people, I'm tired of being ready with certain things. And then like I used to work out every single day, you know, every single day because I'm in the the music uh, industry, you know. And I used to try to stay slim and small because I was trying to do my acting career and I wanted to always be ready, you know. But it got to a point where I was tired of being ready and nobody was calling, so I said, forget it. You know what I mean? It is what it is, you know? And I'm not going to keep working out every single day because in order for you, your body to stay tight um, and look good the way these women be looking, you either go get surgery or you have to work out every single day, you know? And I just didn't have the time for it. So I just did it and said, hey, well, it is what it is. You know, if the people are not calling, you know, I'm not going to keep wasting my time implementing that in my life just to stay fit uh, for TV or for a movie. Um, And I'm not being called. So I let it go. You know, um, certain things you just let go. You know, it's like, I ain't got time for it. You know, you made made, um, a way to do it, but it was always... um, taking something else away, you know, because when you put, have so much going on in your life, you wind up uh, removing sometime something good to replace something else, you know, and I told myself, look, I could add this into my life uh, instead of me working out every single day, you know, I don't go months 
um, without working out. I have to work out because I can't lose my stamina. Um, uh, that's something that's real important to me. Um, and that's important to me. That has nothing to do with the, the way I look. Because you can be fat or big and still have a lot of stamina. And you can also um, have a high metabolism. You know, um, but if you don't work out at all, of course, we know your stamina is low and you don't have that, that, that fast metabolism, metabolism is slow. So with me, even if I don't work out every single day, when a month or two go by and I'm like, ugh, I can feel it in my body. I say, ooh, I'm losing it. You know, if I walk up the stairs and I'm start huffing and puffing, I'm like, oh, well, no. It's time for me to go. I got to go work out and do something. You know what I mean? Because I got to get my stamina back up. Because that means I'm getting tired. My body's lacking. It's like, uh, you know, I'm dragging. So I'm like, oh, no, I got to do something. So that's when I go and I'm, I'll do some workout. That's when I know my body needs to work out. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about that probably tomorrow. I'm going to talk about that, uh, about working out and eating certain foods and what foods are good for you. Because people think that, you know, because you lose weight, you know, um, you're on such a good diet. And when you lose weight, it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle, you know, because you want to continue to eat the healthy foods that's going to keep you alive. It has nothing to do with, oh, I want to diet and lose 30 pounds and then I'm going to go back to eating all these cakes and eating all this fried chicken and eating all of this, but the weight going to come right back on and you're going to be unhealthy again. So it's a lifestyle, people, and we're going to talk about that. I want to talk about that tomorrow. We're going to talk about uh, what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat, what's good for your body because can't nobody tell you what's good for your body. Now, I can go to Weight Watchers or one of them programs, and they can say, well, eat this, eat this, eat this. And half of that stuff I could be allergic to. Do they know that? No, they don't. So, this is why we have to choose our own foods to eat. We have to do the research ourselves and see what our bodies can take so we can lose the proper weight and be healthy doing it. Okay? And working out. It all plays a part together. You know, you know your body. And everybody's body is different. That's what makes us so unique. Because we are all different. Just because you can eat one thing and it helps you lose weight, it's not going to help me. Now, with me, excuse me, y'all, with me, all I have to do is take bread out my diet. I take bread out my diet, I'm going to lose weight. If I eat bread once a week, I'm good. Bread helps me lose weight, but it also helps me gain weight. Keeping my toxins clean, you know, keeping my body clean, detoxing every day helps me lose weight. Also, running and walking helps me lose weight. and Working out helps me um, lose weight and tighten up the body. Now, once you lose weight, this is the other thing. Now, people forget this. Once you lose weight, and we'll talk about this tomorrow, you cannot, you have to work out because your fat is going to be flabby, okay? Because the skin has already been stretched. All you're doing is burning up the fat, but you're not tight, tightening up the skin. So that's something we'll talk about tomorrow as well. Um... But we're going to focus on trying to stay healthy, people, um, so we can live as long as possible. Um, because a lot of people, you know, they may look healthy, you know, you say they're skinny and you think they're healthy, you know, and they may not be, you know. Um, so this is why we have to work hard to keep ourselves healthy. And that means changing our lifestyles, eating um, certain foods. I'll never forget when my son... Um, came to me and, you know, right after my mother died and he had just lost his grandmother, you know, um, and it was heartbreaking for both of us. Um, but when 
they passed away. Both his grandmothers passed away. You know, he said to me, he came to me, I'll never forget it. You know how you open up you open up the refrigerator and you're looking in it? And then when you close it, somebody's standing there. Well, this is how it happened. <laughs> and he said, Mom. And I said, yes. Um, I'm trying to deal with the fact that he scared me. He said, um, can you just stay alive, please? And I said, huh? He said, can you eat, start eating the right foods, Mom, and stay alive? And I'm like, okay. You came down here to scare me and almost gave me a heart attack <laughs> because you want me to stay alive. I got you, son. And I was already on my road to a different lifestyle um, eat, of eating anyway, you know, because I've had a bad stomach. I just had to revise some things because, you know, they give you these nutritionist lists and it don't be fit for your body, you know. So, yeah, I had to revise some things and um, to help myself, you know, but we'll talk about that tomorrow in more detail. But This is the end of this podcast. Y'all remember when people have lost loved ones, especially during this time, it's COVID. A lot of people losing loved ones. Just show that support if you you care a little, little. It could be a little tiny bit. Just show that support, you know. It means a lot to people when you show that support, you know. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Ms. JJ Diamond, Jackie, Deja, whatever y'all call me. I love y'all, and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.